Okay, so welcome everyone. Good morning here at First Fuji. I hope you all enjoyed the gala dinner yesterday and you are fresh and it's a good sign that you are here. Quite some of you, not so many as we expected. But we are happy now here to have a PostGIS session. There are many PostGIS fans here at PostFuji. And uh, we are looking forward now to have three talks. Um, the first one will be by Dara Fai. He will say his full name in a minute. Um, he's in the PostGIS team and is a contributor to PostGIS. So we are happy to have him here and talk about PostGIS and what are the news. So enjoy. Hi, everyone. Glad to see you here. Get, glad to see you alive after the gala dinner. Uh, we had a small question about whether it's post-GIS or post-GIS here. Uh, let's re-ask, is it post-GIS or post-GIS? OK, it would be post-GIS for this talk. <laughs> uh, I'm Dorothy. I'm from Minsk. I'm, uh, recently, I'm a PostGIS post -GIS committer. Uh, and for this session, since, since it's an early morning session, after the gala dinner, I will be reading the change log aloud. <laughs> uh, I hope you enjoy it. So who I am, uh, who am I? Uh, I live in Belarus. I joined PostGIS two years ago. I organized a local meetup. That's why I wasn't here for the first day of Phosphor G. Uh, in the daylight, I pretend to be a manager. In the nighttime, I pretend to be a developer. Uh, I took part in Maps.me, World of Tanks, did something for OpenStreetMap, uh, for Taxi. So if you need something like that in PostGIS, everything was done in PostGIS. Just come up to me and ask. So, you know, uh, each time a new version comes, there is a jump in, in, in the version name number. So this time we got 3.0. We didn't have a major version bump since 2012 in PostGIS. And that's, that's how you break the backwards compatibility. Uh, who knows about Python 3? Cool. So we tried to not break it that way. <laughs> uh, I hope, but uh, it may happen that some of your workflows are broken. Please go on and up download the, uh, the beta and the alpha builds and test your workflows if you want to make sure that they still work. Uh, and uh, yeah, the PostGIS team this year tried to meet up in person. We had uh, some new developers, including me and Raul. So this was a, a coding sprint in Boston. Uh, so in the center, you can see Raul. Uh, you can also see Regina. Oh, oh. you cannot. Now you can. Uh, and you ca can see Regina. And you can see Paul Ramsey, who wasn't able to come here to give this talk. That's why I'm here. Uh, also, later, we went to the OSGEO coding sprint in Minneapolis. And we tried to polish. In the middle of doing the post 3 we met up again and redid the plans. And I hope it's coming out well. So the things that got improved. I I was kidding that it will be reading the change log aloud. I moved the entries around in the change log. So everything of those was done in parallel. Uh, I was focused on teams, the triangulated irregular networks. Raul was doing the map box vector tiling. Uh, there were some improvements in special indexes when we tried providing something and it didn't come as good as we expected it. Uh, there is a major change in raster. I will talk about it later. 
and a theme that you don't usually see in open source software. We greatly improved the stability of the of the of PostGIS. And a nice thing about it that we removed the old parts. So if you ever seen the super old ST Acum function that was there before array aggregate in, in PostGIS, that's not there anywhere anymore. And some of the new functions got added. Let's go into team because I know what, what's happened there. So last year I wrote an article called Isaac Rones are not alpha shapes after the uh, PG routing pro project was trying to get rid of their alpha shape function that they believe that should be used for isochrome generation. I said that, no, you shouldn't be using that. You should construct a tin, and after you construct a tin, you should slice it, and that's how you get the isochromes. Uh, I tried to show how easy is that, and unfortunately, while writing this article, I managed to create or find six tickets in some open source projects that this simple task is not possible. Uh, so this year I took, um, I decided to fix that. So instead of those broken lines, the, the, uh, the straight ones, I want you to all, all to get the curvy ones, the nice curvy ones. Uh, if you want to go in details, go to this article. I'll just go on the PostGIS side. So the first thing I had to do uh, was to fix the segmentize function. Initially it was uh, just, if you got a super long segment and you want to split it every, let's say, 50 meters to generate triangles with a length of 50 meters, uh, you use ST segmentize, but it happens that it, if you've got uh, a thing that is not proportional to 50 meters, you've got a bunch of segments of the length of 50 and a smaller one. And it doesn't look good. So I fixed that. First and easy. And the next thing that comes that when you start reading into how should you generate a team for your lines, for the, your line work of the road network, you start reading about that, you learn that there is a Delanet regulation, that there is a constrained version of that, that there is uh, a conforming version of that. Um, you suddenly need, understand that you need a constrained Delanet triangulation. After that, you find out that it's not in GEOS, but there is one in SFC GAL. So the PostGIS SFC GAL module got one edit. If you need, uh, if you've got a line work and you need your triangles, the, the lines of your triangles to follow the, the lines of your line work, that's what you use. Uh, thing that the most useful part of it is that it carries the Z value. So it does the two dimensional triangulation and if you carry your measure value into a Z of those lines or points, you got a triangulation that stands out and forms a 3D object. Um, the benefit of it is that first thing you try is that you use the usual Delnet triangulation on a segmentized lines, and it's not always properly following the, the, the lines of triangles. This one follows them perfectly and doesn't create additional points. So if you've got a line work of a million points, you don't have a chance to overflow your PostGIS call because it won't add more points into that. And the nice thing about it, it outputs a team. Team is a special data type for holding the triangulated regular network. It was there all the time, but each time you get it in PostGIS, everything just starts breaking. 
um, but later on that. So after you got your triangulation, what you want to do is to slice it. So you've got a hill, and to slice it, you use a function that's called locate between elevations. You just say that I want to, uh, from this tin, I would like to cut a part that is between, let's say, two and three meters. And it, originally, it was used to cut the line strings. So if you had a header route annotated with elevation, you could cut the part that, that are above or below some altitude. But now you can also do that with polygons. You can also do that with tins. And uh, after you do that, you can visualize them as rings. The other thing that you would want to work to do this analytic queries, you would like the, the overlay functions to work. Geos doesn't support triangles. So to pretend that it does, we can convert them internally into polygons. And all the operations are the same. Triangle is a kind of polygon. Um, now, if you are trying to access something with QGIS, it will work. You can take your team table, open up in QGIS with a positive three, and all the triangles will show and will pretend they are polygons, and they will not crash or break in any way. So if you manage to break them, please file a ticket before we release the version three. Uh, another thing that, that was there is a, a bunch of SF Siegel functions. So we removed SF Siegel, function, SF Siegel clones of the functions that were available in Geos in PostGIS 3. One of them was 3D intersects. Uh, internally in Geos backend, it was not actually a Geos. It was uh, the distance implementation that was checking that if distance is zero, they, they are intersecting. So I got the implementation for distance for teams uh, working, and after that, if you want to perform some measurements on your team, it would behave exactly as if they were polygons. So you don't need to store your triangles as polygons anymore in PostGIS. That's it. So the small blog post came up as a bunch of feature improvements. Uh, if you ever write a query that doesn't come out right and you are struggling with it, please go and file a ticket. It may happen that a small change in PostGIS can improve it significantly, the, the use, usability of that. Another thing that got improved in PostGIS is Mapbox vector tiles. Who is using Mapbox vector tiles? Cool. How do you like them in PostGIS? So um, the thing is, everyone was trying to use the Mapbox provided tool set, but it happened that you can actually, with PostGIS 3 or let's say 2.5, you can actually ditch all the backend infrastructure and generate your tiles directly from PostGIS. People started trying to do that, and it happened that there are some improvements that were required. The first one that we got was that we forgot about the feature ID. Uh, if you are displaying something in PostGIS, oh no, sorry, on the front end, on Mapbox GL, if you are hovering your mouse over some layer, it can actually provide you a callback that something is hovered or that something is clicked. But the thing that it will return in that callback would be the ID of the feature that's burned into the tiles. And we didn't have a way to burn that ID in 2.5. In 3.0, we got that. So now you have interactive maps that you can export with PostGIS. Another utility function that was absent or forgotten 
is the tile envelope. You know that there is OGC specification for tiles that has this Y in the different direction that everyone else has. So this one has it not in the OGC way. But it's compatible with Mapbox. It's compatible with all the ways the, the tiles are actually used. And everyone was trying to do their, their own implementation. I've seen one in Python. I've seen one in SQL. I've seen one in PLPG SQL. So now we've got one in C, and it's in the core PostGIS, or in the core PostGIS. So whenever you need to export a tile, you just give the tile ID into that function, feed that, uh, the output of that to ST as MVT, and you're good to go. Take this binary, save it as a file, and that's it. Another thing that got improved is the robustness of processing. The promise that Geos library gave was that if you are feeding it a non-broken geometry, it will perform the overlay operation unless it hits some robustness issue. It happened that MVT export requires uh, integer numbers, so the, all the coordinates are integers, and all the robustness issues are hit very hard in that. And the absent geometries in tiles upset people. So what Raul had to do is to, for MVT processing, swap the Geos library to the one from Mapbox called the GUE. Now, if you feed it any input, it will produce any output. That, that's exactly the way it is. So the, the, if you feed it an invalid something, it will clip it. And most of the time, it will clip it right. And it will also clip it the same way the Mapbox styler will. So one thing we noticed, that it outperforms Geos. That's something to investigate. They are not directly swappable because of the API compatibility, but maybe someone wants another clipper for PostGIS, for PostGIS. Anything about indexing? Who uses indexing, indexes in PostGIS? Cool, cool. Who does not? <laughs> cool, you, know, you, you all know that Indexing is, is the, the reason why people use PostGIS. Post so the first thing that it looks like it's not an index problem, but it happens to be an index one. So the full outer join. Let's imagine you've got some regions, you've got, you perform some calculations, and after that calculations you got yourself two tables, and those two tables are disconnected and the only thing they have in common is a geometry that came from some common table. It happens that in 2.5, you couldn't join on that. There was a hack, you can cast it as text, as a byte array or something for those data types, for internal Postgres data types it worked. Uh, there was some knob that you had to turn to enable that in PostGIS. We turned that knob. Now it works. Uh, the, thing that, the first thing that we tried after that, after we figured out that um, full outer join is working, is to let's try join on the ST intersects. And it happens that it's not possible in Postgres. So if anyone is able to hack Postgres and wants a full outer join on ST intersects, know that it's not a Postgres issue. It's a core Postgres issue. So you can fix it there. The other thing that, that was, was done is that we changed the ordering once again. Who uses B3 index over geometry? Why? Yeah, the, 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 I, I have no idea why people should use the B3 index on geometry. Probably to enforce the uh, uniqueness of that 
you should probably swap it for ID for, for that reason. The thing is, the B3 op operator class is also used for sorting. So we broke all the B3 indexes that almost nobody uses uh, and got a cool Hilbert curve. This is Minsk. It's actually one single line that goes through all the objects in Minsk. And it actually looks like the map of Minsk. So if you need a cool visualization, for someone who wasn't there in Phosphor-G on this morning talk, uh, you know the hack. You can just build, take PostG3 and build the line ordered by geometry. That's it. You've got a single line that goes through all the map. The other thing that, you, that, you, that comes with that is now you can apply all the one-dimensional algorithms to your two-dimensional data. Let's say you've got a raster that's stored as point cloud or something, and you want to perform, I don't know, a dithering. For dithering on that data, you just take, take a point, iterate on them, and carry your data from one point to the next one. Now it's possible if you got some other clever algorithms that you can use on one-dimensional data, you can actually try running them on order by geometry. Other thing that got improved is GIST. The two-dimensional GIST wasn't, almost wasn't touched. It's the most popular index, so nothing to improve there. But the three-dimensional one and the four-dimensional one, we fixed it. If you ever put two-dimensional and four-dimensional thing into the, um, into the table, you could create an index on that, and it will break. And it will not return some of your geometries in 2.5. In, in 3.0, you can. And the other thing is, who wants a thousand, a hundred times faster GIST indexing? Cool. You have to hack Postgres. We have the patch. We have to review that. Please help to push it. The raster. I announced it as a CAG support, the cloud optimized GeoTIFF. As you understand, the PostGIS is probably not really about the clouds. But if you have a, uh, a raster in the COG format, you now can import it, and it will import a lot faster. It will use. So Facebook provided the data set of their population and filled the no data with not a number. And it happened that all of PostGIS wasn't ready to that. We had to convert this raster. We had to fill the, those with zeros or minus ones or something like that. Now you can just ingest it directly. If you have a raster that's mostly no data, it will now skip importing the no data tiles. If you, for some reason, you need the no data tiles, there is a switch that you can get, you, get at you back. Also, if you are having, uh, if you need to reproject your data and still want to use the fast copy mode, there is a switch for that. And the biggest thing for maintainability is that we split out the raster into a separate extension. Raster is now called PostGIS raster. It can be created separately, and after it's created, um, and the, the thing is, if you want to build a PostGIS for some old or a strange system, you can build it without building the GDAL. And that was the major reason why people didn't use extension in 2.0. We were not giving them extension where when they didn't have the raster. Now, they can just le left out, leave out the raster extension. That's it. And a lot more. I believe I don't have more time to talk about that. So a little bit for GeoJSON. We redid that. So now you can call STS GeoJSON on a row. 
with all the properties, and they will, that will give you a feature or a feature collection because it's an aggregate function, and then you can just feed it into the browser, just like Mobox vector tiles. You need less and less backend with PostGIS. Um, you know the thing when, when you get a GeoJSON from somewhere and you're not sure what projection is it, and you also read the spec and know that it's not supposed to even be projected? So for those cases where people export something in a weird projection, we are now stamping this projection inside the GeoJSON. There is a switch to remove that stamping, but now if you do STS GeoJSON and take it back, it will keep the SRID of that. I believe that's useful. If you ever used that in, 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 uh, in a sequence, you know that most of the time you get the uh, GeoJSON and put the SRID on top of that. Now we could skip that part because 4326 would be put automatically. Another thing, we started tracking the dependencies. And if you, have, if you happen to know the packager, please, please let all this list be green and let the uh, more distributions into that. This is a smaller version that hides all the distributions that don't ship one of the dependencies. These are the only distributions that ship all of the dependencies of PostGIS. Please update. It, it's not. We also worked on stability. I will not go on to that. There's a lot of bunches. If you want to read more, there's a bunch of links. Thank you. Yes, thanks a lot, Darafai, for the great introduction into PostGIS. You could have talked much longer, I think, to show all the news, but we have a, a tough schedule. So um, there's no time for questions now, um, or maybe two small ones if someone has a question. Else, Do you remember how I look? Yeah. Can you open your eyes? So remember how I look, find me and ask your question. Yeah, maybe that's the easiest thing so people can now change rooms. And thanks a lot. It was really great to see what, what happens in the project.